a minor two, a minor tears holes in solid rock. Lucas Minero. Already 70.6 kilograms representing Team Lucas Miniero and fighting out of Brazil. Please welcome the former Brave Combat Federation lightweight champion of the world, Lucas Miniero. Introducing his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a mixed martial artist with a professional record of 19 wins and seven losses. He stands 178 centimeters tall and weighs a ready 70.7 kilograms. Representing Bulgarian top team and fighting out of France. Put your hands together for Elias. Broly Show! Good job, Sabah Hoshiji. Far loss, Kramer. Every single time, goosebumps. Main event time. There is a palpable tension in the air right now, Kirik. It's almost as if everybody knows that they are about to see something very, very special. Lucas Monero Martins in black, tight fit fight shorts. Elias Broly Jeroen in black, loose fit fight shorts with yellow accents. Southpaw versus Orthodox, and keep an eye of the kicking game. Oh, beautiful shot down the middle, just above the eye from Elias Jeroen. I was about to say, Lucas Minero is a fantastic Muay Thai practitioner. That Brazilian style really whips in the leg kicks. Broly is loading up on those hands a little bit. That straight left is coiled. He's trying to get his foot just another half inch or an inch on the outside of his opponent, and it's going to come flying right down the middle. Wasn't far away with it. Interestingly though, Lucas hasn't thrown a kick yet. You can already see the marking up over the eye from that first big left straight from Elias. Both fighters just trying to download a little bit of that on one another. Another big shot from Doom. Brave Nation, Elias Broly is throwing shots that will end this. They are very dangerous to throw, however. They put you in danger as well. Nice leg kick from Jerun. Jerun is loading up on everything. No feelers here. Lucas Minero, it still kind of feels like he hasn't really got started in the fight yet. I think he's having a little bit, a little bit of a hard time adjusting to trying to get the reads on Jerun. As far as strategy goes, it's obvious. His opponent's trying to knock him out. What to do with that knowledge, likely going to take just a little bit longer. Neither fighter interested in the clinch whatsoever. Broly is trying to end this at any second. His body is coiled to end it. No feeler, no setup, boom. Kind of get the impression he wants to beat Lucas Minero into coming forward and use that forward momentum then to fire off his it's left hand. It's exactly that, Phil. He's moving forward and then edging back, as you saw right there, trying to get his opponent to commit just a little bit, just inside that pocket. Monero wisely moving that head a little bit and staying just outside the pocket. Both fighters trying to fight for that outside space off the lead leg. Midway point of the first round. Yes, Martins may have blocked that kick with the arms, but that's going to 
that's going to impact the arms. We've seen people break break arms with leg kicks. Or sorry, break by throwing the kick. You typically, Brave Nation, have to block that kick with two forearms, cutting the force of it in half. Block it with just one. There is a risk of breaking the radius of the ulna. And right now, Ilya Sirun is the one for me winning the striking battle right here. No question whatsoever about that. He is creating more damage. He is landing the more effective strikes right now. What about the one-two into the big knee right up the middle? Ooh, Shen on Shen. That they are going to feel that tomorrow. Oh, big shot by Lucas. Oh. Lucas Martins is going to That's it. Oh. It is over wow. with another new number one contender at the lightweight division. And it is the old champion. The old Lightout. is new once Two again. Months. I Two ask months. the question, did he still have what it takes to make a run at the belt at 34 years? Back to the cage. And courtesy of Green Hill, we are getting a look at that knockout. It was a perfect right with a little bit of overhand action to it. Followed up with a vicious flurry that actually momentarily put Elias Broly Jadun out. Head snapped back. Hitting the ground made him come to again, but there was a moment there where Broly was out, and the referee, I think, wisely called it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, what an incredible main event we had. This comes to an end at three minutes and 35 seconds of the very first round. Your winner by TKO due to strikes, Lucas Miniero And the Brave Nation. It's time for our main event of the evening. Presented by Eigenglau, Skype Medical, Agreco, Wyndham Garden Manama, and Batelco. This main event is sanctioned by the Bahrain Mixed Martial Arts Federation with its president, Mohamed Kamber. Two warriors are ready to collide inside the Brave CF Arena. Brave Nation, don't blink for this one. This will be absolute fire. A main event in the lightweight division. Your three judges for the bout are Garth Lyons, Aaron Wallace, and Barir Hassan. And your referee is the bandit, Decky Larkin. Two men enter, and only one man leaves with his arm raised in victory. Who comes out on top in this unbelievable main event? It's time to find out. Let's introduce our two main event warriors. Brave Nation, it's time for war. Before we begin, I have one question for you and one question only. For all those watching in the magnificent Kingdom of Bahrain and the millions watching around the world. Brave Nation, are you ready? Introducing your first warrior, fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a mixed martial artist with a professional record of eight wins and one loss. He stands 175 centimeters tall and weighs already 70.9 kilograms. Representing Junao Fighters and fighting out of Brazil, please welcome Enrique Marquez. And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a big martial artist with a professional record of 20 wins and six losses. He stands 183 centimeters tall and weighs already 72 kilograms. Representing Team Lucas Miniero 
and fighting out of Sao Paulo, Brazil. Please welcome the former Brave Combat Federation lightweight champion of the world, Lucas Mineiro Martins. Bandit Larkin laying down the law for our main event. You can see Lucas Martins is the bigger fighter aesthetically, but as we know, it's not about the size of the dog in the fight. It's about the fight in the dog. Here we go, main event time. Former, former champion Lucas Miniero trying to reclaim his status as one of the premier lightweights in the world. Lucas Minero Martins moving very, very smoothly on his feet, popping in and out just a little bit. Expert, textbook, distance management here. And he came stalking, trying to get his opponents back up against the fence where that beautiful footwork no longer has much use. He is one of the greatest exponents of that Brazilian style of Muay Thai. Marquez not far away with a hip there. Marquez not standing on ceremony or reputation at all. He's happy to take the fight to Martins. And he came, they want to be a little more discreet in his movement. Constantly press. Oh! It's not likely to win him the fight. Huge That win. was it. That is. Holds inside. This main event comes to an explosive end at one minute and nine seconds of the very first round, where referee Decky Larkin stops the bound with your winner due to TKO, due to strikes, Lucas Miniano Martins! <laughs> Brazil and representing Capital de Luta. 
Put your hands together for Lucas Miniero Marquis. For fighter instructions, your referee, Eduardo Erdi. Arrow. Luan Santiago. Santiago in the black with the gray trim and the blue with the white trim is Monero. And here we go. A potential five round fight. Kirik, this is so big. This is such an anticipated matchup in all of Brazil and on the entire world landscape. Miao is showing incredible technique right now. Operating out of a southpaw stance, he's landing that liver kick seemingly at will. He's so confident in his distancing, he doesn't even have his hands up. There was a third one, and there's a oh, fourth one. Oh, big left hand. That's one thing. If you can tag Lucas Monero, it could be trouble. Santiago has a tough, tough chin. Oh, and he's right on the money right now, isn't he? I mean, right direct shots right down the alley. Those liver kicks are money in the bank, too. The pain doesn't go away. The head shots will clear in five to ten seconds, but those three, now four liver shots have landed. That's going to stay with you for a minute or two. Oh, and there he goes again. Man, he is on point with that big left hand, that big left straight. And he's making Monero guess and just taking complete control of this fight. Once again, we're seeing the highest, highest level of skill in this sport. That southpaw fighting is relatively new, and it can't be done better than this. You know, it's just real simple, too. I mean, it's textbook. It's just a nice one-two. And you got that right. That southpaw stance just seems to be giving Monero a lot of troubles. Interestingly, Miao was equally comfortable in the clinch. Although this is clearly his game plan. When it came time to come to grips, he was fine with that, too. What a big right uppercut that snuck through as well. And Santiago is so loose right now and so accurate within this first minute and a half, two minutes. You see Miao just starting to shift from southpaw to orthodox. That may be part of his plan. Gets you used to the southpaw game, switches to orthodox, and lands a couple of clean shots before you realize what's happened. It'll be interesting to see if, if Lucas Martins can really get his offense going. Right now, he's in total defense mode. He's kind of allowing himself to be a punching bag. And if you're, if you're Luan Santiago, you don't really want to back up. You don't really want to take your foot off the gas pedal when you're having this much success. You know, there's an old saying, kill the body and the head will die. Martin's body is being killed and his head is dying too from those straight lefts. Obviously drawing blood as Luan Santiago. And the... But that's not a good place. For the Juan Santiago, he's sneaking the leg up, but that is a bad place because Lucas Martins is so good on the ground. Oh, it'd be direct shots right to the jaw. Santiago backs up and throws a oh big my God. and a nasty knee. Martins is going to try to drag Mao down to the ground. I don't know that I've ever in my life seen a flying jump away knee. I don't think I've ever seen it. Seeing a lot of firsts on this event, Kirik. Lucas Martin's already changing the tides. It looks like he was just going to be a punching bag there for a while. But when you're dealing with high level skilled athletes like this, it's never over till it's over. Miao is feeling a little bit of fatigue in his arms. He's trying to shake it out. He'll probably succeed. Less than a minute here left in round number one. Already living up to the hype, Santiago Monero. There was an accidental low blow. The referee was right on top of it. Neither fighter appeared phased by it. The referee's allowing it to continue.
Nice jab by Lucas Monero. Santiago walks right into that one. See that unorthodox stance? Really hard to deal with a guy like Santiago. It always makes you guess. And the southpaw stance definitely adds to it. Tough round to call. First round of a potential five. And, and I'll tell you, Monero. Seems like he's woken up, and that could be trouble for Santiago. Nice inside leg kick by Monero, met by a kick to the body by Santiago. Both fighters really bouncing. I think Martin's corner is little, little fire under him. Wow, both fighters get a shot in. You know, Monero has that deceptive power. We know so much about the submission game and what he can do, but he does have some great power, especially when he can get his weight up like it is right now, being able to fight at lightweight, not cutting down to feather. He has that added strength. I think Martins was, was trying to check Meow's timing and distancing, and he didn't have luck with it. You may just see him turn on his attack now. Inside leg kick by Lucas Monero, who's done very successful with leg kicks thus far. As he tries to fight his way back, it'd be potentially down around. But definitely, this is not a sprint. This is a bit of a marathon. It's a five round fight. You could take your time. And as we've seen over and over and over again on this card, this is the highest level of technique that exists in the sport. Low kicks were characteristically done to the inner and the outer thigh. Now they're being switched to the calf. If you look at the inside of Meow's lead calf, it's turning red from those kicks. Oh, the one thing I'll say about Santiago is he's not really going with what worked in that first round, that first couple minutes, and that was just those straight one-twos right down the middle, and Monero really had no answer for it, but now he's kind of playing a different game, and Monero is definitely getting some better shots in. Martins is very cleverly attacking that leg. It's going to slow that footwork down noticeably towards the second half of this round. What a big jumping switch kick to the body by Santiago, throwing a little flash into it. Brave Combat Federation 11. We hope you're hashtagging out there in the internet world. On all of your social media platforms, just hashtag BraveCF11. Of course, remember our next event will be in Jakarta, Indonesia. That'll be May 12th, so if you don't want to miss that one. Right down the middle once again for Santiago. Another one sticks another big left hand. And now he's getting back to what was working in round one. It's, it's as if he heard me. That straight leg left has had success for him this entire fight. I, I do think he's going to start going back on it. But those low calf kicks are starting to take an effect. Absolutely. As you can see, Santiago starting to pull that leg away. Not checking the kicks, just taking the kicks. And you're right. Once your mobility goes, that could be trouble. Tries to go up high. Monero ducks it. You may see him shift to orthodox, not because he wants to, not by choice, but because that lead leg is so damaged. We've seen a little bit of everything from Santiago in the past. I mean, this is a guy that can bring you to the ground, hold you on the ground and dominate you. As we're seeing right here, he just wants to slug it out here with Monero. Just waiting for Monero to drop those hands for that opportunity just to knock him directly out. And Monero not giving him that chance. Smart fighter, Lucas Monero. 
Martins is trying to counter straight shots with looping shots, and it, that can be problematic. If it works, it works great. You hit the fighter with something he's never seen, but it doesn't always work. These two fighters are having a little a little footwork dance, Cyrus. They're each trying to keep their laid foot on the outside of the other one's lead foot. When you do that, you have a clear, clear shot to your opponent. We had a butt bit of a warning in there. And here comes Monero charging forward again. And now Lucas Martin is really getting his confidence up, and that is such a difference maker. And now you see as the tick as the ticks go away here in our round number two. Could be interesting. This is a big, big round here, as most likely you're looking at one to one. This could be a huge shift. Beautiful, beautiful angle cut by Lucas Martins, but Santiago trying to go over the top, big powerful shots. He's sticking to the bread and butter. He's going right down the middle, and another big right jab followed up by a huge left straight. Just seems to me like Monero's kind of got his timing down now. It seems like he knows what he's throwing. And he doesn't seem too phased by it, like you said. Somehow, Meow took about a dozen liver shots, and it didn't seem to bother him. Once again, I don't think I've ever seen that before. This is truly a special night. Yes, indeed. Interim light. Weight championship on the line. We already saw Clis India Brew defend his light heavyweight championship, and now the gold on the line. A beautiful, shiny, brave belt. <laughs> Lucas Monero continues to inch forward. Where this was this was Mao's game. In round one, he was the one coming forward. He was the one dictating the pace. Now he's allowing Monero to do that. And it just seems like the stamina, the energy level is most definitely with Monero right now. He has played this game very smart to this point. Monero, I believe, is taking everything that there is, and now he's starting to stalk. Everything's coming a lot easier to Monero at this point. And Santiago just hasn't really been able to get a strike through in the last round and a half. I believe it's the inside calf kick that's done it. When you have a, a style of attack that's based on perfect footwork and you start chopping at that leg, it no longer works. Methodical. Lucas Monero, of course, was very, very embarrassed, very down when he was unable to make the way to fight our featherweight champion, Elias Bodigsdam. And it's something where he had to deal with it. But the matchmakers felt to give him another shot. And now here he is in the third round of a championship bout. And he is hitting his punches. His accuracy is right on target. There it is there, again. Th there it goes again. And that leg is, is turning into a red mess. Meow shifting to an orthodox stance. I don't think he wants to. I think he has to. He's going to go back to Southpaw for a minute, but you're right. He's having a heck of a time with that lead leg. And Monero knows it.
you know, Monero, not a, a guy that, you know, says a whole lot. He, he definitely operates by his actions and through his fighting. He's not a guy that does a whole lot of trash talking. When he does say something, he definitely means it. But Santiago, the guy has a lot of swag. And he feels like he is uh, definitely ready to take home that championship. But he's going to have to bounce back in a big way. When you do have a hyper, hyper showy style of fighting and the fight starts to turn, it can be very, very difficult psychologically. The crowd that was cheering you on is then starting to cheer for your opponent and it hurts. Martin's on the other hand, he fights for himself, doesn't listen to the crowd. It's one of those things where you could tell from the weigh-ins. I mean, Santiago was in his face, and Martin just didn't really budge. Not a whole lot out of him. It's not a guy with a big showy personality. He just comes to get it done. Lucas Martins is the epitome of a professional fighter. Seconds ticking down here, and that's going to be it for round number three. And there we go. So round three is up. We got two to go. been pretty flawless and here we go round number four now we're getting into the deep rounds and this is something that Santiago is not used to Monero however has been down this road before he's used to these longer fights and he trains for it standing Incredible in the pocket Monero's gonna get the takedown beautiful takedown well done by Lucas Martin, Santiago on his back. Martins is now showing he can dominate in the striking and he can dominate in the grappling. Looking to pass the guard. He's got that half guard and he's going to look to operate. Maybe still Looking some for the strikes. Joke. It's something he's very, very adept at. We've seen it before. It's almost there. The fingers are reaching for the arm. If he locks it in, it's done, Carrick. We've seen this before. If he, he is so good at this. Woo! Santiago! Hey, Ric Flair would have been proud of that. That was a good woo. How about the war of attrition there? He nearly had that locked in. And when he locks that, he finishes fights. We saw that in Lucas Monero's debut. I have to tell you, Cyrus, I thought, I thought that was the end of the fight. And that might be the confidence that, Man that Santiago needs to get out of that very, very dangerous choke. You don't want to give Monero another chance to lock that in, though. These championship rounds are so interesting because it's a window not just in the a fighter's conditioning or their technique. This is a window into their heart. Monero's on top again in a very, very good position. Monero is now going to artfully, just like he did before, combine elbows, strikes, and submission threats. There it goes again. The arm is deeper. God, how good is Martins? Could he be that close? Could he lock it on and win himself? A big old golden championship belt. Can he be deemed the best lightweight in the land? Santiago able to get back to his feet. Could the third time be the charm if he gets another chance? Martins is in full on juggernaut mode. He is in killer mode. He is just dialed in. That cold stare. Just looking straight through Santiago. He's threatening strikes, threatening takedowns. Once there's a takedown, he's threatening submissions. This is the entire arsenal in mixed martial arts you're seeing. 
He's getting a chant out there. They're chanting Minero, Minero. That is Lucas Martins. But man, you know Santiago, very, very explosive. At any time, he can connect. Those legs don't have near the snap they did in round one. And he's pulling on his punches a bit, too. Santiago not quite committing. And just not, not being able to put his weight completely on his legs, either. The damage has been done. I noticed Martins is no longer going as heavily for that inside low kick. He may feel like it's done the damage he needs it to do. Wants to focus now on getting it to the ground. Main event time. Interim lightweight championship on the line. Santiago and Martins. Facing off, throwing down, and Lucas Martins is in the driver's seat at this point. But keep in mind, folks, this is a five-round fight. We're only in round four. We still have a whole nother round to go. Should they get out of four? Crowd's been electric, that's for sure. All night long, they have been in these fights. A lot of Bella Horizonte fighters and and now just respecting two very, very accomplished Brazilian beasts in Santiago and Martins. Well put, Cyrus. One of the things I most love about the Brazilian crowd is how they are how knowledgeable they are about this sport. One more to go. It's that final championship round to go. We'll see if uh if he could do it again. Last time we saw him inside this cage, he was getting a big old Dars choke. Once again, beautiful, beautiful display of sportsmanship that we've come to expect in Brave. Getting the Brazilian crowds into it, and here we go. Final round. Who wants it more? Oh! Martins is on. He dropped him, nearly dropped him to the ground. And it's going to be a big takedown, but no, Santiago, are you kidding me? We may see those elbows now. How did he stay on his feet? And he does Down. it. Or is he? Oh, but here, oh, I was about to say, Martin is going to work on that neck again. Cyrus, I think there's a gravity leak over there. <laughs> yeah, I think you're right. Santiago has to be given tons of credit for staying on his feet in that position after being tagged at least three times in that flurry. Santiago was able to stay on his feet after an awesome takedown attempt. He was picked up high into the sky, but Martins could not dump him. Santiago's going to have to throw caution at the wind here. I really think he needs to have a definitive round. Usually at this point in the fight, the script has been written, and you know more or less what's going to happen. I have no idea what's going to happen now. Monero and Santiago are beautiful. Little uppercut there, snuck in by Santiago, but Monero is landing the more powerful punches. He's putting more behind every shot that he throws. We're now seeing a reversal in strategy. The straight punches are coming from Monero, and the looping shots are coming from Meow. Talk about that zombie-like behavior, man. He just continues to walk forward. Nothing seems to be thwarting. Lucas Monero, he has his eye on the prize. It's a terrible thing to do everything you've got to throw your best, best punches, best kicks, have somebody walk right through them. But well, that's exactly what we're seeing. We're seeing the more accomplished, the more composed Lucas Monero control this championship bout. Santiago, with that explosiveness, always has a chance to stop you. Meow is far from broken.
You almost, if you're Meow, you want to just sucker Martins into to an exchange. And trick him into going for the kill and, and try to land one of your own. Let me tell you, Cyrus, I'm glad there's no such thing as a six-round fight in mixed martial arts. These two fighters are giving everything they have. Oh, yeah, it's all being left inside of the brave cage. Both men with maximum effort. 90 seconds left, folks. Until we potentially crown a champion, an interim champion here at Brave Combat Federation. Santiago just is not landing like he was early on in the fight. You, you made such a good point about the legs. The legs have taken such punishment, and he just has not been able to set and fire like he did early on. In boxing, they say kill the body and the head will die. Well, if you kill the legs, the body dies. And then the head dies. I think Meow needs to do just a little bit more to win this round and potentially the fight, and he's, he's not doing it. 30 seconds left. Santiago has to go for it. I don't think he's done quite enough to, to win a round at this point. There's only 15 seconds left, and it looks like Monero's going to get himself a takedown if he can clasp those hands. And he does. He got the takedown, and that's it. He's won the round. Yeah, that's called sealing and the deal. And it's over! Oh, my goodness! Oh! Oh, my gosh. I believe his arm's broken. Champion of the 